the last lesson of this chapter that we are going to cover. Okay, which means chapter review tomorrow, test Monday. Um, what was that? Our Monday test? Yep. Okay, so so far we've considered uh, dissolving solids in solution. Now we're going to talk about the reverse process, which we, what is the reverse process of that? Precipitate forming or some solid crashing out of solution. Okay, in this section we're going to show how to predict whether a precipitate will form when two solutions are mixed. Okay? Um, we have talked about cube form. Um, in the context of dissolving stuff, Q is really just the ion product because we don't have solids in it. So this would be before you get to equilibrium, just like it was in the previous time we dealt with Q. <coughs> so, just like before, when Q is greater than KSP, we would normally say it would shift to the left. Okay, well what is the shift to the left of a, of a uh, dissolving equation? It's, a it's the reverse, right? It's, it's a precipitate forming. So, if we have Q is greater than our KSP, what that means, listen, this is key. If Q is greater than KSP, what that means is, if you have too many ions dissolved, you have more than the saturated amount you are quote unquote super saturated. And so what will happen is, is it will start reacting to form the solid and breaking out of solution until it reaches the correct solubility amount. Okay, you're probably thinking, well how do we even get it? We're, we're gonna talk about taking two different solutions and pouring them together. Okay, and I'll explain when we get to the problem, what that looks like, okay? And if Q is less than KSP, that means that the ions that we have are not at the saturation point, or they're not completely saturated, and so we could actually dissolve more if we wanted to. So if Q is less, no precipitate will form. If Q is greater, we have too many ions in solution, and some of it's going to react to form the solid and precipitate out. Okay, so before we get too crazy, let's just do this one. This one's a little, a little more simple. Okay, it says a solution is prepared by adding, so here's one solution, 750 milliliters of that molarity, and then a different solution, 300 milliliters of of uh, that molarity of KiO3. Then it wants to know, will this precipitate, yes or no? So let me kind of show you the picture that's going on here. Let's say this is beaker one, and we have 750 milliliters of 4.0 times 10 to the negative third Ce NO3. And then over here, we have 300 milliliters, 2 times 10 to the negative 2 molarity of KiO3. And we are going to take those beakers. First off, okay, this is complete dissolved, so my ions in solution should be Ce3 plus and 3NO3 minus. Does that make sense? Here are my ions, I'm going to complete associates, follow it. Over here I should have K plus and IO3 minus. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mix them. So we're going to take them and we're going to mix them together into one beaker. Now, I have all the ions together. The question they're asking is, will CE react with IO3? 
What were these two guys together before I mixed them? No, they weren't together before I mixed them. We know that CE isn't going to react with NO3 because it was sol soluble. And we know that K when reacted with IO3, it dissolved, it was soluble. So those aren't going to react to form a precipitate. So when I mix them and these guys come in contact, will a precipitate form? Now I could ask the same question about this, but it's specifically saying will CE and IO3 react to form a precipitate? So here's how we're going to do this. The very first thing you need to do is you need to find the concentration of each of your individual things with the new volume. So, which ions am I focusing on here? Okay. So let's start by finding the concentration of this guy. Okay, we'll say initial concentration because we don't know if we're at equilibrium or not. Okay? I need to find the moles so that I can divide by my total volume because now I have a new volume, correct? Okay, this was 750, this was 300. Now when I mix them together, I should have a total of 1,050 milliliters. Does that make sense? So, let's look at 750 milliliters, okay, times the molarity. And remember, a, mil, uh, uh, a millimole per milliliter is the same thing, right, as a mole per liter. divided by my total volume. I'll keep it in milliliters. Because I want to have millimoles divided by milliliters in the end to get molarity. You guys remember that a millimole per milliliter is the same as a mole per liter. Okay, so are you, do you see how this will give me millimoles of my stuff and then dividing it by my new total volume. So I'll have millimoles divided by milliliters to give me my molarity. When you do that, you should get 2.86 times 10 to the negative 3. Stop me if you have questions. Where things came from, why I'm doing something. <coughs> right? Then you probably should be thinking I need the other concentration. Okay? And the IO3, oh, I probably should make this clear right off the bat. Let's go back here. I wanted this ion, and I want this ion, right? Is that correct? Okay? Just want to make note that the ion CE in this particular equation was a one-to-one -one ratio with the whole entire thing. So that's why I could assume I, I didn't have to change or multiply by any factor here. Does that make sense? And the same thing's true here. I could write all the equations out if you want, but are you guys seeing that these are one-to-one -one ratios specifically for the ions I want? Like, that's not a one-to-one -one ratio, but I don't want that ion. Does that make sense? Okay. Then we have 300. So if it were three, would you multiply by three? And if it comes from your starting point, because the, the thing that makes this really difficult is we're finding the concentration from what they came from, and then we're using this equation to, to do to find our Q. And so it's a little bit difficult. And so if I were trying to find this, yes, I would have to multiply by three. But, not to the but I don't have to do it at the end here. Like I don't have to take this and multiply it by three, and I'll show you. So you just multiply that answer by three. Like yes. if it were. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh,
Okay. What did you guys get for that? Okay, now I want to know if a precipitate will form of this. So I want to compare Q to KSP, correct? The point of finding this is so that I can figure out what? Q. So our Q. Now I'm just going to, you want me to show this this equation or can you follow along and know that it's going to be CE3 plus and IO3 with a coefficient or an exponent of 3 there. Everybody can see that? Okay, here's where the tricky part comes from. Okay, what we did yesterday and the day before when we were just dealing with not mixing things and finding if a precipitate were formed, we, we plugged in 3s to the third, right? Okay, well remember, I already know the concentration, and the concentration came from something else. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug those concentrations in. Okay, don't get confused thinking I have to take this and multiply by 3 because there's 3 here. Well, if we, were, if we started with this and we were breaking that down, then yes. But we got the concentration of IO3 from something else that was a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay? It's really important. It's easy to get that mixed up. Okay? So we plug in. Anybody find Q yet? So there's our Q, then we're comparing it to KSP. Looks like Q is greater than KSP. So what would we say? Now, you guys, hopefully you guys can understand this, that if you look, Q wasn't like a lot greater than KSP, right? I mean, they're pretty close. So do you think you'd have to precipitate a ton of it out for it to get to equilibrium? No. Okay. So um, this wouldn't be like you're seeing all of it crash out. When I say it precipitates out, it doesn't mean all of it precipitates out. It will just precipitate out enough to get so that your ions are not over the saturation point. Does that make sense, everybody? No, I mean, I, it'd probably be just a really small amount of ions because if you divide that by the KSP, you get 2.8. You gotta be careful because you got two ions and you're multiplying them and cubing them, so it's not as simple as, it's not a simple calculation. You're gonna actually see it on the next problem we do. It's actually very complicated. Okay, good with this? This is just laying the foundation for what we're gonna be doing next. Okay, so in this problem, okay, it's the same idea. We would have, we're still going to have to go through this. We're still going to have to figure out whether or not it will precipitate. And if we find out it's if it will precipitate, then I want to find out what are the equilibrium concentrations. And that can become difficult to just kind of figure out where it is. And so what honestly we have to do, it's kind of goofy, okay? But it's, it's way easier than the alternative, is we'll figure out if a precipitate's formed. If it does, we'll assume the precipitate completely comes out of solution and then work backwards to equilibrium. So I'll show you as we, as we progress, as we do this one. Okay. We'll probably just do this one and save the next one for tomorrow. Okay, so is it the same idea? Do we have two solutions that we're mixing together? Okay, so it's going to be similar to this. Okay, notice that we're trying to figure out the concentrations of PB and I. Okay, when I do this, 
and I'm mixing PBNO3 and uh, NAI. I think I'm missing one thing of information. Yeah. Will it always tell you like what you have Like what you were solving for? It'll tell you what you're solving for. But I don't know why I don't have this up here. You don't want to put this up here. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations of PB two plus and I minus. We need to figure out if PBI two will precipitate first. Why do you think I would have to find if it precipitates or not? Yeah, if it doesn't precipitate, then we would just find that concentration. Good. Okay. So most of the time when we do these types of problems, you'll find that a precipitate will occur. But I still want to go through the process of how you would do that. It's just like we did earlier. I want to find the concentration of PB2 plus initially and the concentration of I minus initially. And remember, they come from my other two, my two solutions, right? Come from there and comes from there. Look at the ratios between the things as a whole and the ion we're trying to find. What is it? One to one? One to one. Okay. So now we're, what we're going to do is, is find the millimoles divided by the total volume. Milliliters. Total volume is what? 300? something different about this one though that, than you did, that you didn't see in the previous problem. Usually, um, if it wasn't, you would have to like, like if I was solving for the concentration of this, I would just take this number and multiply it by two. Because, right, that would be breaking up into twice as many particles. So the mole number I get here would be twice as much we still divide by the same volume, but you would have to multiply by two. Do you guys have numbers or are you waiting for me? What'd you get? Uh, 1.67 to the 10 megaseconds of G plus, and for I minus, it's 6.67 to the 10 megaseconds. <laughs> They're both six from the eating. The six, seven, they're both just the same. I don't know why I laughed. They're divided by five. <laughs> they're divided by It's three. not really that funny. They're being divided by three. That's why. I don't know. Those numbers just look at the first second. I thought they were just like reverse of each other, but they don't no, say that. They're both divided by three. That's why it's okay. two thirds. All right. So the point of finding the concentrations is to figure out if a precipitate will form. So I've got to solve for what? Q. Q. And I want to know, will PBI2 form or not? So, just hoping you guys, without me having to save a step here. Does everybody understand that? Where I got those numbers, why this is a two here, all that, 
all of that. That makes sense, everyone? Okay, we're trying to figure out if this precipitates or not. You want that product? Yeah, what is it? 7.4 negative 10. Okay, so can we compare Q to KSP? Okay, Q's bigger, which means we've got too many ions in solution, so a PPT will form. Okay, that's just the pr preliminary work. Now, this is where it gets kind of difficult. What we are going to do is we are going to take and precipitate it all out. Okay? And then once we precipitate it all out, we're going to then do an equilibrium problem. Because finding where in, in on the equilibrium lies when we've gone past it is very difficult. Okay? So, if we're doing, if we're going to precipitate it all out, what would the reaction look like? What would the precipitation reaction look like? PBI2, like the... Quick. Oh, so it would be PB2 plus, plus I minus, or two I minus, would be PBI2. Now, this is technically the reverse reaction of that. Okay? And the reason why we're going to assume completion is how do I find the K value of the reverse reaction? You guys remember? You guys remember how you find the K value for a reverse reaction? It's a couple check. Yes. Which gives us approximately 7 times 10 to the 7, which means it. Well, I should say far right for this equation. I might have rounded. Okay. I have 7.1 and 10 to the negative. Yes. Divided? Front these around the bottom? No. Okay. So the reason why you don't have to do this, I'm just showing you why we're going to, why we can make an assumption that this is going to go all the way to completion. If this number is a really high number, that means your products are high and your reactants are what? Low. So it allows us to go all the way to completion and then work backwards. So, I'll write that here. Okay, we're going to assume completion because of a high K value. Then we're going to do our stoichiometry to completely react it. Now I want to know the millivolts of each. So PB would be 100 times 0.05 to find millimoles, correct? It should give me 5 millimoles. Just like we did last chapter when we did the before and after, when we assumed the reaction went to completion. I2 would be 200 times 0.1. What does that give us? What? Now, here's where you have to think. This is important. Okay? So, when I react 5 of this, how much of this gets reacted? So it would be minus 5 minus 2 times 5. Everybody see that? So I do have 0. I'll have 10 
the moles here? They know that you're subtracting the PB to not the uh, I'm subtracting both. They're both reacting. Well, why'd, why'd you subtract? Why don't you like do minus 20 though? Oh, let me react it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So what we've done then is <coughs> we're saying now this means that I would produce what five millimoles of this, but I'm not really worried about that. And here's why. So what? What now we're going to do next is we're going to allow the system to readjust back to equilibrium. Guys, in reality, will all of it precipitate out? No. Okay, but finding where the equilibrium point is when you've gone over is not easy. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the beginning. We're essentially going to react it all out and then treat it like an equilibrium problem. Do we know how to do an equilibrium problem, don't we? Yeah. We've done thousands of equilibrium problems. So, let's do it. PBI2, we want to figure out how much ions it will break up into, or how much will dissolve to reach equilibrium. <coughs> so it essentially becomes, this would be the, the problem, and I'm going to write it. What is the What is the solubility of solid PBI2? Okay. Now I know that uh, this is not like what the question is asking, but I'm just going to show you that this is kind of the type of, of question that, that it would look like if we were doing what we did a couple days ago. got this number from. Let me show you where I got that number from. Okay? When I did this completely reacting, follow with me here. Okay? I wrecked all my PB ions, but I still had some iodine left over. Okay? I had 10 millimoles of iodine ions in solution still. Okay? So let me figure out the concentration of my iodine solution, uh, iodine ions in solution. I take 10 millimoles divided by what? 300. When you do that, you will get 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2. So what we're essentially saying here is, oh, this problem ends up turning out to be, in the end, basically this which is what we did day one. Didn't we do common ion stuff day one where we said we had a solid and we had another salt in there or something that gave a common ion, what is the solubility? That's what we did two days ago. Okay, so what we're simply going to do here then is set up an ice table and solve. I can ignore the solid, right? I don't have any of this, and we said we have 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2. Plus 2x, right? Finish by plugging into my equilibrium expression and solving for what? X. But 
KSP was 1.4, because we're, no, we're not using that one, right? We're using the solubility one, the one that actually now is forming your ions. Can I, is it okay if I just get rid of that 2x? You know why I'm doing that? And you know why I'm squaring it? Everybody seeing where I'm getting that stuff from? I'm making the assumption that you guys are good getting rid of the x because we're saying this is going to be so small in comparison to this. Okay, so when you solve for x, this is what you get. 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. So that's not my answer, but we're really close to the answer. What was our original question asking? What do we want? Of these two ions, right? Well, we know oops, not a B. BB2 plus I minus at equilibrium. PB2 plus is just x, right? So it's this 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. I minus is this plus 2 times x. When you do that, it isn't going to change. It's still going to be this number. So our I minus 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2. That's what we're thinking. Those are our two answers. Did I give you enough room on there? Uh, nope. I'm like cramming. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I, I write kind of more than I need to because I want to kind of give you some explanations along the way with some words and whatnot. Okay, so I'm going to shut the camera off quickly, but I do want to quickly review. One sec. Just the process.